Hello, welcome back to my channel, Family Tech. I am so glad you're here. I'm Sarah, and I love teaching people all about technology and how they can best use technology in their homes. So definitely give me a subscribe, like this video. That helps me out to help me create more content so that I can help families understand and manage the technology in their home. So today we are talking about a NAS device. And a NAS device stands for Network Attached Storage. And we're gonna dig all into why you need one at your home. Hello friends, I'm Sarah Kimmel, your friendly neighborhood tech expert. You can find me helping families with tech problems on TV news, podcasts, Instagram, Facebook, and my website, familytechzone.com. All right, welcome back. So again, we're talking about NAS device. NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. It's basically a glorified external hard drive that plugs into your home network. So that's the you know network attached storage. So it's not going to be a USB connection to your computer. It's going to be connected to the network and you access the files and access everything over the network connection, not over a USB connection. So it can be a little bit slower, but not much. Most things these days run at a pretty high speed, so you can transfer quite a lot of data over the network very quickly. So why do you need a NAS device at your home? I'm gonna give you four reasons why it is important you have a NAS device in your home. And we'll get into it. The fourth reason is going to be why it needs to be a NAS instead of an external hard drive, because that is very important. So the first reason you need a NAS device in your home is for backups. And this is the best place to store all of the files and folders and photos and videos all of the things that you are storing on your computer that are just taking up space that you're not going to do anything with anytime soon. But you want to make sure that you have access to them. But you don't want to pay for cloud storage or anything like that. You just want to have those files readily available when you need them, but you don't need them on your computer to you know, clog up the computer. A lot of computers are coming with less and less space just because there's so much cloud storage now you're going to fill up your computer a lot more quickly. So the reason a NAS device is going to help you with backups, um, and it's even going to help you back up your computer itself. So if you want to run a backup and store that backup somewhere, a NAS device is the perfect place to put it. Um, also storing your photos, you know you're not going to use those photos anytime soon. No matter how much you think you're going to make that scrapbook, it's probably not going to happen. So make sure you get all of those files off of your phone, off of your computer. Um, what's really great about some NAS devices, like the MyCloud Duo, this is from Western Digital. Um, Western Digital MyCloud Duo has an app that you can install on your phone. And when you install this app on your phone, any photos or videos will be automatically backed up to your NAS device at your home. So anytime you know you break your phone, you lose your phone, you're not going to lose those files and you're not going to have to pay for those files to be stored somewhere because they're automatically getting backed up on your home NAS device. So the first like number one reason that you need a NAS device is for backups. Now, uh, I will have a whole video about how to back up like a pro. I'm just going to run down the like three rules of backup and the three rules of backup is you need three copies of your data on two different technologies, one being in the cloud. So those are the three rules of backup. Like I said, I'll get a whole video on how to back up like a pro, but relying on one copy of your data is never a good idea. So a NAS device is really going to help you make sure you have that redundancy in place. The second reason that you should have a NAS device is most of the newer NAS devices have the ability to install a Plex server. Now what a Plex server is, I consider it like your own personal Netflix. And it's a really great place to back up all of the DVDs, CDs, videos, and everything that you have on a readily accessible platform. So you install the Plex app on your you know, Roku, your Amazon Fire TV, even on your tablet or your phone, and you can access those files from anywhere. And it just reminds me of way back when in CES, I want to say 
maybe even 10 years ago, I was at a lunch with a brand representative and they were asking like, oh my gosh, what is the best way to get my Baby Einstein DVDs available to watch on a road trip? And I'm like, oh my goodness, you need a Plex server. So if you rip the CD, the, so you just need a regular DVD drive or something like that, and you can rip the data from that CD, put it on this Plex server, so you're putting it on your NAS device, and then you can download those files through Plex on a tablet. So when you're on a road trip or anything like that, you can access those videos from the tablet so your kid can watch Baby Einstein. Now, I might be dating myself. I don't know how many parents these days are subjected to Baby Einstein, but it was huge when my kids were growing up. So I totally understand the need to have that available. You know, and so this is really good for a lot of the DVDs that you have that aren't available on any other streaming platform. You know, I have a ton of older DVDs of movies that just haven't made it yet to streaming and I love being able to watch it through my Plex server. So Plex server is the number two reason you need a NAS in your home because that way you can have your own personal Netflix, you can have access to all of your favorite movies, all of your favorite favorite TV shows right here in your home. You don't even need an internet connection as long as you have a local connection to that Plex server. The other really cool thing is you can share your Plex server with other people. So they just sign up for a free Plex account. You can invite them to your Plex server and they would have access to any of the libraries that you have specifically shared with them. So I have different libraries for workout DVDs that I've ripped. I own like a billion workout DVDs and I ripped them all up to my Plex server so that I can do my workouts from my Roku because we just don't really have a DVD player in the garage or wherever else I'm working out. So I can share my workout library, my movie library, my TV library, really anything that I choose. I can also do like a home video library and I can choose not to share that with the people that I'm sharing my libraries with. So you can choose to share all of your libraries or just individual ones. Um, so it's a really great way to share your movie collection. And if you join someone's Plex server that has a lot of movies like mine. Um, I actually have a friend who has way more Plex movies than I do, so I've joined his server. We can always browse through there and see if there's anything we want to watch. Don't need to pay for anything like Netflix or Hulu or anything like that. The third reason that you need a Plex server, and I touched on it briefly, is the cost of cloud solutions. So if you don't want to pay $12 a month to Dropbox, if you don't want to pay $10 a month to Google or Microsoft or any of these other cloud storage platforms, then using a NAS device can still give you access to those files on a cloud basis, but those files are stored locally on your home network. So you don't have to pay anyone to store those files for you. So you can save money if you have something like a NAS to be able to access your files from anywhere and not have to pay something like Dropbox or Google or Microsoft. Microsoft or any of the other cloud service platforms. So, so that's going to be a really big selling point of the NAS because it is going to be a little expensive at front, up front because you're paying for the NAS device, you're paying for the hard drive. Sometimes you can get it all included into one, but uh, it is going to be kind of expensive to get started. But once you're there, again, you won't have to pay for any cloud services and you will have the ability to back up and have all of your photos and files readily available to you. Plus, you get your own personal Netflix. So the fourth reason you need a NAS device is redundancy. I touched on it really quickly, but here is the reason for the NAS. So external hard drives. This is one thing that breaks my heart and that I the reason I'm doing this video is because so many people will rely on a single external hard drive to back up their files and photos. So they have photos of their child's birth on a single external hard drive. What they don't understand is external hard drives fail frequently and they're not going to last forever. So one day you go to get these files, get look at these photos, and you plug it into your computer and you can't access the files. The hard drive has died, all of your files are 
gone. Now you can typically pay a data recovery service, but it gets very, very expensive. And I'm talking thousands of dollars to save your files from an external hard drive. So please, from the bottom of my heart, do not rely on a single external hard drive as the only copy of important files or documents because it is not reliable and it will fail eventually. I'm fine with an external hard drive to transfer files if I'm moving files from a computer to something else. You know, it's a great tool to do that or to, you know, temporarily store anything, but I would not have the only copy of a file on an external hard drive unless I was okay with losing that file. So what a NAS has is multiple hard drives inside the device. And what this does is, so most of the consumer brand have two drives. And so like the Western Digital MyCloud Duo has two drives built in. And if you have two 10 terabyte drives, you actually only have 10 terabytes of space. And the reason for this is it creates redundancy. It's called a RAID and it mirrors the drives. So anything I store on one drive automatically gets stored also to the second drive and it, they work together. So many NAS devices allow you the ability to hot swap a drive. So say drive one fails, which it will do, like we mentioned with an external hard drive, it will fail. And most NAS devices run on you know internal hard drives, just regular hard drives that you would buy for your computer or anything like that. So say one drive fails, you just take out the failed drive, replace it with a new drive, and everything syncs back over and everything is good. You don't lose any data, you don't lose any files. So this is called redundancy. So it has redundancy built in because it is an arrayed configuration. You know, if you have multiple drives, so I have a Synology NAS that has four drives and I'm only able to use the space from three of the four drives because the last drive handles the mirroring. So if one drive fails in that configuration, I just take out the failed drive, replace it with a brand new drive, and everything is good. In the rare, rare, rare circumstance that both drives fail at the same time, then that is why I say you should have two copies of your data, one in a cloud storage location. Um, but you know, if you're saving money and you just want it on the NAS, you're going to be fairly protected. It's going to be a very low chance that both drives fail at the same time. But if one drive fails, you want to make sure to replace that drive right away because you don't want the second drive to fail while the first one has been failed. So those are the reasons that you need a NAS device in your home. You know, it's the best place to store all of your photos, files, pictures, movies, etc. So here are some of the NAS devices that I have in my home. As I mentioned, this is the Synology. It has four drives. This one over here is the Netgear Ready NAS, another solid choice. Uh, I really like the ability to hot swap these drives in the Netgear Ready NAS. And then this one is the Western Digital MyCloud Duo, which I really like for its automatic backing up of phone photos, videos, and things like that. Also with the cloud access from anywhere, uh, I really do like this Western Digital My Cloud Duo for those things. It works really well for sharing files and photos as well. So um, the only thing I don't like is that the drives are not readily accessible. I would have to shut it down in order to swap out a drive. With these other two, I can just pull the drive out with it still being on and replace it and everything will work while that is happening. But with the Western Digital, I would need to open it up to replace that drive. So uh, those are the NAS devices that I recommend. Make sure you subscribe. It really helps me out. I love making this kind of content and I want to do it for a very long time. So hit that subscribe button and you will be notified of when I publish, which is every Thursday. I will start uploading on other days when I just have different different products that I want to talk about, but I want to reserve Thursdays for these tech tips of things you can do to help you understand and manage the technology in your home. Make sure you're following me on Instagram. If you have any questions, I am frequently available on my direct messages on Instagram and I will see you next time.